Blow their motor heads. Part two on the teardown of the TXL. Well, the goal for tonight is to get the, the skid, the jack shaft, the drive shaft, and the chain case out. So let's get to work and let's see how far we can get. So one of the things that I've uh, set myself up with to keep my life as easy as it can be as I get older is this lift table. And uh, I find it pretty optimal for getting the skid out of a sled. Now, I used to just do it on the floor and roll the sled on its side, you know, put some carpet under the bumpers and whatnot. but uh, I don't know, the lift table and the hoist here, I, I kind of like it now. All right, so I do have two soft straps on here just to keep the hook well away from the, the tail light and everything else. I don't know, you can do what you want, but I think it's safer that way. All right, first look at the skid. Overall, pretty good. Could use new slides. Bearings all feel pretty good. Uh, limiter strap needs to be changed. Shafts are greased up and sliding. Really nice. Overall, this is a pretty good skid. So, uh, that's great news. Okay, so the next item is to get the chain case off and drain. So that's this cover. And it's, um, I think this is the, hmm, not even sure. This should be the, the drain plug. And then it's these three bolts here to get that off. That's an unusual bolt down there on the drain plug. That's why I'm kind of hesitating on it. But that is the correct location for the chain fill level. So let's get that off of there. Oh great, somebody didn't, well, somebody used the gasket, but they used red RTV on top of the gasket. That's unfortunate. We'll, uh, we'll replace that with a brand new gasket. You can still get these gaskets new from Polaris. All right, so once you're in there, we're gonna back off the adjuster bolt. Well, before we back off the adjuster bolt, we're gonna take these two 5 16 bolts loose. Um, that way, with the adjuster bolt tight, I can hold on the brake if I need to to get them loose. Then we'll back off the adjuster and then the gears and the guts just come out. All right, time for a little discussion here. This is gear lube, 80W90 or heavier. This is the wrong stuff for your snowmobile chain case. Do not do this. This stuff is so thick that in cold weather, it'll make your chain stretch. The right stuff to do if you're cheap is to use automatic transmission fluid. Every chain drive transfer case in a pickup or SUV from the 80s into the 2000s used automatic trans transmission fluid. If it's good enough for those chains, it's good enough for this. And yeah, I know it's a little harder to seal up, but your chain will thank you. It'll last longer, it's way better. Don't do gear lube. So there's a jam nut, make sure you crack the jam nut loose before you spin the adjuster bolt back. 
we'll talk about adjusting that on the on the assembly side. So if you need to know the proper way to uh, adjust your your uh, chain tension on your snowmobile, make sure and uh, subscribe and hit that notification button so you'll know when I'll post more videos and you can learn about that. There's the chain, no big deal. So there's always some spacers for alignment. You want to make sure you save all those. Got one, two, three, and they're all on the bottom shaft on this sled. Once you get your, your chain and your gears off, the next step is take off your Speedo housing adapter. So I'll do that right now. Um, don't have any really good way to set you up on the tripod. I got to think about that. Okay, let's take the Speedo cable off first and then we'll take the housing off. So these bolts, they're really close. They like a really thin wall socket. So I usually get out my quarter inch drive and put it on an adapter, even at that isn't getting a great grab. <sighs> Speedo key is stuck in that drive shaft. That'll happen. We got the sled way up in the air. See if I can get a shot under here where you can see what I'm doing, but without getting in the way. All right. Can you see the drive shaft? Not very well, but this is about it. You're working on a sled. So. If you're lucky, you can just reach in there, grab it, and slide it out of the chain case. And it's coming. It came pretty far. It's probably stuck on the track lugs, so that's why I'm pushing up on the track. There's no hole in the belly pan to stick a driver through, so we're just going to take a 2x4 and try to... Try to knock it through, unsuccessfully so far. There we go. So it's out of the, it's out of the chain case bearing now. So now we got to worry about this jack shaft bearing. That is interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that type of locking collar on one of these bearings before. Set screw split collar. Let's see how hard it is to get it off. And I just want to tell you, if you've reached this point and you can't get this bearing off, knock that flange out of the way cut through the outer race, spin it 180, cut through the outer race again, and you'll be able to pull it right back through that flange. In fact, that might be what I show you. But first, I want to try this and see if we can get it, get it with a little finesse. All right, that screw's stripped. So I'm uh, gonna lower the sled down for a little bit easier working and uh, we'll, we'll cut that bearing off. Okay, I got my full face shield on and got the shaft sticking out to about where I want it and here goes.
So there you go. When you can't get your shaft out, <laughs> that's what she said. Don't cut your shaft off. Just cut the outer race off the bearing. Once you get the flange off, the shaft comes right out. And there's the drive shaft. So I think that was probably much easier than people that have never done this think it would be. So with the track out, we're going to move to the uh, jack shaft. <laughs> All right, so those two are up here, are easy and obvious. This one we actually have to get to from under the tunnel. So we're gonna lift the sled up again. So up inside the tunnel with the track removed, we need to get this nut out. We're gonna try the air ratchet, but honestly, I'd say nine times out of 10, I have to do it with an open end wrench. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That worked really nice. All right, with that third bolt out, next we gotta take these step two set screws loose, get that collar loose, and then we can work these flanges off. So this is the type of bearing I prefer with two set screws and uh, no eccentric collar. I'm really not a big fan of the eccentric collars. I, I think personally that they make your shaft run off center and vibrate. And uh, typically I've seen that a, a good, set, a good uh, bearing with the set screws will have a hold tighter on the inside and your shaft will run more centered. Obviously there is a teeny tiny bit of clearance or you couldn't get the shaft on and off, but uh, I don't know, that's my preference. I okay, so before you unbolt your three bolts holding your chain case on, you will wanna take off these four bolts on the top for the brakes. If it's a top loader chain case, there, there might be just two. Now we're going to get those three bolts out that hold the chain case on. Going to want a little bit of an extension for that bottom one. So the bottom bolt is way, way down by the belly pan. You got to sneak around underneath your hoses. Where's my light? Not sure if you'll even be able to see this on the camera. So no power tool access to this last bolt. These are carriage bolts, which is really nice. You don't have to hold the other side unless it starts spinning. One thing I want to point out here shims. So we're going to note that we're going to put those shims back where they were when we put this together. Somebody's probably gone to some effort to get the chain case and the shafts lined up right. Right. Quite often, the jack shaft is really stuck in that bearing. And uh, we're going to put on some fresh patch lock bolts. So I don't mind sacrificing these bolts to tap on. Wow. That's not moving. Got an old aluminum suspension shaft and wow i think it's starting to go there we go bolt still comes out with the fingers so that's not bad so that gets the chain case off once i get the bad bolt out There we go. Chain case is out. If I have a later top loader chain case, I will probably upgrade it. Nothing wrong with this one or these style brakes, but uh, I do like the top loader brakes a little better. So we do still have this bearing to deal with. She runs good, but 
I always replace them. I don't know how many miles are on this. Being the two set screw type, it could be original to the sled. So let me find my face shield and we'll get that out of there. No guilt. New bearings. New bearings are cheap. New bearings are good. So one thing I want to show you is that there were shims on the top bolts and there were two back here, four up here. So I wiped off a clean space that'll be hidden by the chain case and I wrote down the number so I can get the correct amount of shims back in those spots when I reassemble it. Just taking a quick video of the wiring so I know where to put everything when I put it back together. Uh, voltage regulator, pretty obvious, but uh, blue on top, white and red on the hand warmer switch. Get the ground off. Um, I've already got the CDI box disconnected, so we're going to pull the whole wiring harness out of the sled since we're going to pressure wash it. All right, here we're getting the seat off. You can see there's some bolts up here. Hopefully the camera's pointed the right way, more or less. And there's nuts in the trunk. Number one. Okay, so the seat gets slid back just a little bit so you can get this plug apart. And then there's these three nuts you got to take off. With any luck, they come right off. Sometimes the bolts break, sometimes the bolts spin in the tunnel because they're carriage bolts, and then you got to grind it off. Um, get this bracket off, then the gas tank comes off. All right, well, that was a one beer job. This is only beer number two. So I've got this thing all torn down, and uh, Next step is to pressure wash it. I might pick away at a couple little things and clean them up a little bit or remove a couple more parts. But we're gonna get that dirty belly pan cleaned up and get this sled, get all the hard parts to clean on this sled really clean before it goes back together. So thanks for watching. If you're into old sleds, be sure to subscribe because there'll be more old sled projects as the winter proceeds. And I'm still doing some automotive stuff. So don't run away if you're an automotive guy. It's not done yet. Thanks for watching.